Subsidy removal, floating of the Naira, and of course, inflation, top agenda as Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria conclude its two-day meeting today. Welcome to Business Daily. I am Yusuf Akogu. We take our business top stories. Glad to have you back. Now we quickly give you an update of how the stock market closed yesterday. Indeed, the market closed a positive with the all share index way, way, way above a, a 65,000 basis point. Of course, it's a new all time high. The index they appreciated 0.41%. And of course, the market cap also appreciated uh, not so uh, much indeed, but up about 831.500 million volume of shares, value at 12.9%. Uh, 36 uh, uh, billion naira, of course, in the deals of over 9,000 uh, uh, 9, deals, actually, exchange hands among investors, of course, on the day. We look at the gainers for the day, of course, of the like of NASCON, NASCON uh, gaining 10% there to close at 31 naira 90. Cup. Of course, Glasgow Smith back on the gainers table after a very long time, gaining 10% to close also at 8 naira. 25 cobalt per share of course ft and coco gaining 10 percent as well maximum gain uh, to close at two naira 20 cobalt indeed as well of course on the losers uh table we have in the lack of ikeja hotel losing 10 10 percent to close downward there two naira 70 cobalt uh, per share of course motivas uh from the mining uh sector also closing negative there 9.97 percent to close at three naira 34 cobalt. Of course, Ella Lakes closing downward as well, 9.86% to close downward at 3 naira 93 cobalt. The top traded equities for the day, of course, of course, most of them all in the banking sector, FBN uh, holding the Taiwan, Taiwan Bank, UBA also another Taiwan Bank, uh, 30, uh, 347 million volume of shares is traded, UBA as well, 62.8 million volume of shares, and of course, FCMB Group in the Taiwan Tai Bank. Uh, also traded 45.7 million volume of shares is traded look at the rest of africa the market are closing uh, uh well uh south africa closed negative actually not in green it's red 0.08 percent of course you go to kenya nairobi stock exchange closing downward as well 0.34 percent why the market in ghana closed flat on the day so these are the uh, the performance of the market as it went down on Monday. Of course, we, uh, the trading is on as usual, and we'll give you updates of uh, how the market will fare today. But I have, uh, uh, let me quickly get a reaction from my guest here, who is also a stockbroker, uh, Mr. Steve Mwachuku. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to have you on Business Daily. My pleasure, too. Yes, let me quickly get your reaction on the performance of the market, especially in Nigeria, as it is right now. The market, uh, at no time high, was also set yesterday. Yes, it's just like last time you had me on this studio, too, when you asked, well, the beer stayed in for three or four couple of days, and now the bull is returning to the market, given the fact I told you mm -hmm. that what will sustain the 
bull within the corridor of the market is the fundamentals of these equities. And, and you can see that uh, when First Bank released the second quarter half year financial statement, such an impressive in the top and bottom line actually mm. pushed the entire banking stocks up what we saw on Friday and what we also saw yesterday. A couple of them actually appreciated based on those. So the fundamentals are still within the market mm. and the fundamentals is what will still keep the bull within and keep foreign investors or keep investors within the corridor of market and continue to push these very uh, prices or push these very uh, indices up because uh, the fundamentals are quite rich in the sense that you can't find any exchange in the world where a dividend payout will be in the region of 8 to 10 percent, some even pay up to 12 percent, mm, given the huge. fact that mm. they have a very huge bottom line. Mm -hmm. Indeed, just, uh, uh, before we uh, shift attention from this topic, uh, what, how do you think this uh, uh, honeymoon, rather, I would say, is going to last? Uh, well, that's uh, like expected. By the time the second quarter report continues to trickle in, we'll continue to see investors taking decisions in the sense that they start weighing the earning performance of these equities at the floor of Nigerian exchange based on their current trading prices. Where they see you are overvalued, investors will offload and rebalance. That is where you see what we call price correction will start taking place. Where they also see that you're undervalued, investors will move in to actually push your prices up because they think that comparing your earning per share or your earning positions against your current selling price is not the reality. So the investors will actually judge equities based on this very critical fundamental thing. Mm. Beyond the board and management team of these companies, it is their strongness of their, the sadness of their financial statements, the strongness and the sadness of their books that investors actually look because the ultimate goal is to have a dividend payout or to have a returns on your investment. So these are the things investors are looking at. Like I said, it, it may still remain, the boom may still remain, but it's a time to be conscious buyer. Mm, indeed, uh, quite an interesting submission there uh, from Mr. Steve. We'll talk more uh, about uh, uh, other issues, especially with regards to Forex, foreign exchange market, since the unification, uh, I mean the harmonization rather, of the exchange rate, there seems to be a decline in the value of Naira. Uh, this report uh, tells us more of how the, uh, I mean, the reaction from what we have from the BDC's operators. Commendations trail the president's decision to achieve a convergence of exchange rates, which experts believe is a better option. This unification of the exchange rate is good. It's only good for Nigeria because it eliminates the black market and it stops swelling the black market. With the national currency exchanging for 876 naira per dollar at the IRE window, was the decision to flow the naira right after all. There are so many problems. Nigeria economy depends on foreign countries for a lot of goods and services. And then, of course, this uh, unification that comes suddenly is the effect, the immediate effect of the sudden change. Mm. It is, but hopefully I'm optimistic that in no distance time, the rate will match and uh, it will appreciate our local currency. Bureau the change operators whose businesses appear to have been battered by the federal government exchange rate unification policy described the purported Central Bank of Nigeria's decision to withdraw licenses of nearly 3,000 BDC's operators as fake news. Revocation of licensing is not a, it's a fake news, let me tell you, because it has not been, it has not come to our notice, and whatever CBN does regarding Burudi change, they have a way of communicating to us. And on this one, we have not been communicated. Analysts are of the view that with a more liberalized forex market, the pressure of the backlog of the unmet demands and other maturing forex related obligations have been unleashed on the investors and exporters window. To mitigate this, the monetary authorities are urged to investigate this drastic growth in money supply and take steps to curb subsequent expansion.
glad to have you back indeed quite a whole lot of uh, development there in the in the forex market especially since the unification of exchange rates the rate has been on a decline and then we'll, we'll look at it and of course like we told you earlier the monetary policy committee of the Centra central bank is uh, the, the decision uh, with regards to their meeting will come out later today of course this is the first meeting under president bola ahmed Tinubu, and of course the first one as well uh, without the suspended central bank governor, uh, Mr. Godwin A. Mifele. I have joining me right here in the studio. Mr. Steve Mwachko is still right here with us uh, in the studio to give us his reaction. Always a pleasure to have you here. My pleasure. So let's quickly get your reaction now. The uh, exchange rate has been on a decline, especially uh, since the uh, rate was harmonized. What do you think is responsible for all of this? Some have said that uh, we are more like a consuming economy. As long as we keep depending on foreign goods, our currency will continue uh, to, I mean, uh, uh, the volatility will continue. Well, I think uh, there's still ambiguity in the choice of words harmonization, flotation, unification, you can banter with any words and mm. it continue to confuse Nigerians and the rest of the investing public. But what we need is some level of stability. We need some level of certainty mm. in the, our exchange market. That's all Nigerians, both the importer, both the exporter, just need some level of sanity mm. in the exchange rate, a very rate that is very uh, accommodating dating fair to the both parties the importer and also the exporter so that's what the what do we need to do to achieve this uh, we need to do a lot to achieve first from the side of the push the demand we need to actually you know reduce the, the pressure on that very market mm. our balance of payment is not is lopsided in the sense that we consume a lot of foreign mm. made products that's the angle the government should tackle with physical policy. So that's why so most times when we continue to narrate these stories or tell these stories, it seems as if we continue to call out on government because it has to do with government. The mm. posture of government, the policies you have on ground determines what these rates are. Just like he came up on the podium the other day, the president of Nigeria came up and said, I am going to do this. I'm going to remove wealth subsidies. See what happened. The ripple effect is what we are all facing now. Mm. And we are now calling on the president to please can you kindly take away pride? I think well, this is the truth. Mm. Take away pride and reverse this decision. The decision is not good for the economy. It's not also good for you as a government. The revenues you are looking for, you will not get it. Mm. And the consequential effect on the living condition of Nigeria will be worsened. So that's mm. why you have to review this very decision. Reverse it. If not, you reverse it by 100%. Reverse it and let the implementation of this very fuel subsidy or remover be in a partial in, in phase in, in a scale of 50, 30%. Mm. Yeah, uh, so uh, that uh, the burden will not be too much on Nigerians. So it's good with looking wars and see how far we can also improve in our local refining production the, 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 so that what we consume also. Mm. Because all these are the pressure. We are talking about the exchange rate. These are the sources of the pressure on the CBN, mm. defending Naira. Our foreign reserve have dropped from somewhere around $41 billion yeah. to a mm. current of 33. Mm. And we do go down the more. On a daily basis, we are consuming foreign made goods. We are consuming not just only the consumables, we're also consuming the fuel mm. that we have the crude here that we can refine. So these are the areas the government has to look in, not just mere policy pronouncements or mere policy decisions. Mm. You have to put the concrete uh, and, measures. And there seems not to be uh, so much action from the physical authority. It's like the, mo the monetary authority is burdened with so much, so much responsibility. Of course, of course. And you see... Uh, just like it's been expected that the CBN will come up with its NPR, uh, NPC meeting today with some decision on the CCR rate, the CRA, CRR rates, mm. the NPR, NPR rates, mm. and the cash reserve ratio, mm. and all, mm. all of that. That's metric corridor as well. 
So what are we expecting? Mm. I am not, I, to be optimistic or to be sincere, I am not expecting any decision of the CBN to actually augment what the sufferings Nigerians are passing through. Our interest rate is there around 18.5%. Mm. Whether you take it to 19% or you reverse it to 18%, taking away 50 basis points or by 100 basis points, it will have minimal impact mm. to the, the sufferings mm. of Nigeria. So mm. these are not the areas I'm looking we were looking for a concrete physical policy decision from the federal government that's the only thing that could go make like i said reverse this decision on fuel subsidy if not by 100 percent please dear president reverse it by 50 percent uh, to reduce the sufferings uh, of uh, nigeria, nigeria. Mr. Mr. Fuel, Steve, sorry Mr. to say this mm. fuel is one of the essential commodity any touch any touch on it mm. definitely we have a ripple effect in all that lights or all that commodities just, just a couple around. of weeks ago this decision were, was really praised by nigerians this same subsidy removal we, we've referred it we've called it so many names calm a cartel holding nigeria hostages and all of that but now the, the president was bold enough to say look this thing has to go they call it evil that must, I don't, that know, must I do don't know the Nigerians you are talking about, but for some people like us who have been consistent, if you watch me, my articles mm. and whatever, my niggas all are directed on not to remove web subsidy. Watch me, the directors are all there. I have been consistent about this very issue. Mm. The, the government has to be careful. Why are you removing a commodity, removing subsidy from a commodity that is essential commodity to Nigeria? You don't do that. Even the almighty U.S., the almighty Europe, they pay some levels of subsidy in some certain items. So why are we not saying the truth to ourselves? Mm. But what we are, what personally may I may condemn is the scam around the consumption quantity that NMPC continue to banter that we are consuming close to about 70 million or 67 mm. million, liters. million liters. So but these are the area I said, no, this is but a that scam. that has dropped to about 34 million liters. Oh, or about. That's still not a certainty. How do we agree to with the uh, records of the uh, data from the NMPC that we are actually consuming 33 million? Mm. Because you have to be forensic and empirical about this mm. if you want to really ascertain these very numbers. Uh, 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 what are the number of cars available in Nigeria? The registration rates, the data are there. Based on what we have, we are still not consuming up to 26 million. Mm. By the data I have, mm. we are not consuming up to 26 million. million. Mm. Interesting. Maybe the NNPC will have to consult you as well. Uh, let's look at uh, the Monetary Policy Committee meeting now. Uh, in a matter of a matter of hours, the decisions will come out. Uh, currently, the uh, naira is exchanging about eight sixty-five to US dollars. Inflation rates are twenty-two point seven nine percent, and of course, the current NPR rate eighteen point five percent. We're having the first meeting under this administration, under a new CBN governor, acting governor. What decision should we expect from the meeting today? Oh, having it under MFLA or post MFLA does not make any difference. It's a question of taking the right decision that has very good bearing to mm. the economy. Mm. Just like we are talking about the cost of finances going up mm. from somewhere around 11.5% and it was raised to what we, what we have now, 18.5%, mm. over 700 basis points or thereabouts. And you still have not achieved a single digit inflation rate. As we speak, the inf rather the inflation rate moved from somewhere around 14% to a current 22.79%. Mm. So you have not achieved the purpose of why mm. you raised mm. the interest rate. Mm. Now the cost of finance to manufacturers, to industry players is going up. Yes, can we still continue to raise this very interest rate so that the inflation rate will be curtailed? Mm. The answer is no. For me, the posture I, I suppose to, the CBN supposed to have now is to hold. Mm. They should be in a hold mm. mode. Let's see some policies from the physical policy makers. That's all you need to argument. Mm. As it stands now, I have no hope. I have no expectation from the central bank or the MPC committee, the monetary policy committee, because they have nothing to offer. The sufferings we are facing is beyond a monetary policy decisions. We need physical decision. Just like Mr. President stood on that podium that day and said, I have removed a fuel subsidy and everything turns around. Mm. That's the kind of decisions we need. We need decisions. Just like they are talking about palliative 
keep saying it. What Nigerians need is not cash palliative. What Nigerians need is input palliative. Palliative that will touch Nigerians. Mm. Palliative like bosses. Palliative like mass transit bosses available mm. to Nigeria. Mm. Not this cash that you will still find the uh, the registrar or the register of the book. You still find the politician populating it with their children, their sons, their daughters, their chronics. So we don't need such kind of palliative. Those models should not suffer this very period. We need palliatives that touches to the economy and we reflect in the lives of every Nigerian. Uh, 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 like I said, palliative that has to do with machinery for agriculture, improved seed for farmers, even giving them some soft loans. These are the uh, palliatives uh, we need. Mr. Wanchuku, you did uh, uh, say that you want government to reverse the decision with regards to subsidy uh, removal. Are you also saying that the exchange rate unification should also be reversed? Well, the point or is, more windows should also be created? It's not a question of even the unification. or the, It's a question of making supply. If you're talking about unification, it's quite good. It's good to unify, to have a, some level of confidence built around your exchange rate. Mm. The question we are talking about on the production of crude oil, where are the sources of forests? We continue to talk about the Malams and the rest of them are going anywhere, looking for dollar abroad and selling to importers or selling to, to manufacturers. Mm. So the question is, is government making available the needed level of liquidity that needs to be supplied to the exchange market. Mm. That is the core of the issue. What is an NPC supplying to CBN? So we are talking about unification and mm. why we are having on the production of crude. Crude is the major source of our the forest. Yes. And we have non-oil. What are we doing about These are the areas we need government. Mm. I think the, uh, the last check, we, we earn about $4.8 billion from non-oil sector. And that's not sufficient enough. We need mm. to diversify the economy, mm. improve those very policies that will make more sales or more proceed from the, the non-oil sector. Like we have the foreign uh, diaspora remittances. Increase it. Put up policies that will encourage our sons and daughters who have some dollar starch abroad to bring it back here. Put up policies. Mm. Give them confidence that when you bring this money here, that the, the confidence that this money value will remain. Not the issue of the chest of figure moving from 460 to 7 to 800 mm. and you are causing a lot of havoc to the economy because as we speak, what you, they just succeeded is the valuation of Naira, not the unification. You know they continue to run away from the war, the valuation. They just devalued Naira mm. and Naira have lost its value furthermore. Mm. The About purchasing 20%. strength of mm. Naira have gone further down. Mm. So this is not the policies we need. We need policies that will show up and reduce the dependency but, of but, foreign but, but some 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 uh, people I have spoken with did say that this is a temporary measure that it, that in due time the value of naira will be restored how 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 will you restore it when you don't have plans to at least reduce the, 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 the demand for foreign med goods by implementing backward integration program or import substitution program. These are things that need to be done. Mm -hmm. We have not seen any policy direction in that regard. Why should, uh, where, we be, why should we be consuming... When well, well, the government is barely two months, uh, quite a whole lot... My, my, barely uh, two months and you took the most drastic decisions that are affecting your economy, it will take you more than 10 years to correct the decision you've taken if you don't reverse this decision. By the time Nigerians lose their jobs, the, you know one thing about the economy of Nigeria. The informal sector constitutes more than 60 percent of the economy itself mm. in the informal sector mm. and these are the worst hit sector mm. because you don't they don't end your salaries they are not in your payroll you may not be able to know what they are feeling but they are there the fortnizer man at the street the barber shop there that cannot buy fuel now to bar people or the saloon woman there that don't have patronage, or the man running a small boutique somewhere there that needs to also lighten up his shop. Mm. These are the people that is suffering now. Mm. Or those petty men and women mm. who yeah. go out on daily yeah. basis. Mi, mi, Mr. Steve, watch, before we wrap up, I want to get a word from you with regards to Monetary Policy uh, Committee, and since uh, their decision is also key to what happened in the economy. They have done so, uh, or they have made so much effort to check inflation by raising NPR 
for I mean for us since uh, for more than seven MPC meeting meetings now, but that appears not to have worked, like you rightly pointed out. So, what other factor do you think that you actually tackle, or that you actually in I mean uh, decision that you take today to manage inflation inflationary pressure? Like I said earlier, I have no expectation from the central bank MPC meeting. I keep saying that's the truth. Mm. I have no single expectation whether they have a hold posture or they reduce it by 50 or 100 basis points or increase it by 100 or 50 basis points. Mm. They is totally insignificant to the current mm. sufferings mm. or current economic situation. Mm. That is I hope a you have truth. not lost faith in the economy. It's not that I have lost faith because I'm, my target is to those who actually need to take decisions, mm. not the MPC. Mm. When you have a cash reserve ratio move from maybe 32% to 30 or 29% mm. or liquidity ratio move from 30% to 25%, mm. you're only making money available for banks. Mm. And what has that to do with the sufferings of Nigerians? Mm. That's why I said it's totally inconsequential, the decision of the MPC the, meeting. The, okay, totally so inconsequential. The, 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 we need physical decision, decision that is concrete enough to Turn Go around. Long. Absolutely. Nah, to turn around truth. the economy. I must thank you. Steve Machko is an economist, uh, interesting, a very passionate Nigerian there. I mean, expressing his view. I must thank you for your time on Business Daily. Thanks for having me. Well, it's on that note that we wrap up the show today. Join us tomorrow for more. I am Yusuf Akogun.